Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, the only monthly programme offering you the facts on climate change. Later in the programme, Facing the Flames, how Portugal is adapting to increased risks from forest fires. If we want to keep living in a place like this, we need to be prepared, and we need to be prepared now. But first, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. It has been very warm for the time of year. We've just had the hottest January on record in Europe, with temperatures 3.1 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 reference period. Let's go and have a look at that in a wider context. And this is the surface air temperature anomaly for January from Europe across Russia all the way to Japan. We can see here in Europe, yes, it was warmer, but here, for example, in Moscow, it was 9.4 degrees above average in January. And there are areas here where it was 12 degrees above average last month as well. It's worth bearing in mind that there is significant seasonal variability in the wintertime in Europe. And some areas of the Northern Hemisphere, for example, Alaska, has seen temperatures 4.7 degrees lower than average in January. Now, let's move on to forest fires, the focus of our report. And you'll know that in Australia, they suffered ferocious wildfires in January, exacerbated by an unusually long drought and heat wave. And I wanted to show you these two satellite images. This one was taken before the fires and this one was taken afterwards. And all of these areas in brown were burnt by the flames. Now, climate change is projected to enhance the risk of forest fires, even though the link between the two is complex. So what's being done here in Europe to adapt? Well, we sent our reporter, Lindsay Rempel, to Portugal to see what they're doing there. Even over two years later, Portugal's countryside is scarred. The fires that ripped through this area in 2017 are still visible in the hills here. That summer was one of the worst fire seasons in this country in living memory. Over 100 people died, 30 of them along this road, near the village of Pedrago Grande. We were surrounded by the fire during five hours and defending our houses and our village. Pedro Pedrosa lives near Pedrago Grande. He says that the fires in 2017 opened the eyes of the people who live here to the effects of climate change and to the need for action. We think uh, there's everything to do with, with the climate change because the, these events are happening more and more and will happen in the future for sure. That's one of the main reasons we decided to do something because if we want to keep living in a place like this, we need to be prepared. Being prepared is a big job. As the world heats up, Portugal's fire season is getting longer and the fires burn hotter. There's now a requirement to cut back trees 10 meters either side of the road to stop fires from spreading. But land ownership is an issue. Portugal has the highest percentage of privately owned land in the European Union, 97%. And it's often left to grow wild. When owners don't manage the land, the newly created rural fire service is stepping in. And it's not just people clearing the land. Just down the hill is where Jao Pedro works. He's paid to take care of a herd of goats. They keep the grass here short and harder to burn. It's still just a pilot program, but there are shepherds like him all over the country. And where goats and chainsaws aren't enough, Portugal is fighting fire with fire. Fire can, is a good employee, and it's for sure during the summer a bad boss. So we need to, to, to use it uh, wisely during the winter time. Close to Pedrago Grande, the Rural Fire Service has started what's called a prescribed burn. They're lighting up forests now so it doesn't act as a tinderbox for wildfire this summer. We need to take all opportunities during the winter time, spring and autumn, in order to have the job done on the prevention side. Treat the land with chips, mechanical, prescribed burning and so forth. So if you can do it, not just walking but running ahead of the fire, we will be on the safe side. He says it's a matter of when, not if, Portugal will burn again. But if this country can adapt and be prepared for the new normal, he says it might stand a chance of saving homes and saving lives. You can read more about wildfires and climate change and see all of the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.